Well, I am a physical oceanographer and uh, physical means I work with the physics of the ocean, the dynamics of the ocean, how it moves. And we look at uh, measuring currents and we measure sea level and its changes. And we look at uh, the layers of the ocean and how they're heating and expanding or cooling. And uh, my particular work is to look at ocean eddies. And ocean eddies are like the big weather systems in the ocean that move a lot of heat and nutrients around. And I've been uh, observing those most of my career. So um, in my job, I do that with two main um, objectives. I use satellite data because satellite measures the sea surface and that moves with these big ocean eddies. And uh, I've worked a lot with the international community to try and build up the scientists around these observations. And I work as a project scientist for the French Space Agency in developing science applications and ocean applications using these uh, big um, satellite measurements of sea level and its changes. So it's something that is uh, one of the real fundamentals of uh, the Earth system is the slow ocean movements. And so being able to observe those uh, globally with satellites is something that is uh, a real uh, mainstay of uh, how we understand the ocean. We as oceanographers only um, discovered them once we'd launched satellites because the oceans are just populated with these eddies. It's like when you look at a, at a weather map and you see all of the big high and, pressure, and low pressure systems moving through. The same thing with eddies, uh, they're everywhere in the ocean and we only really discovered that with satellite altimetry. But it comes home when there's a big warm eddy stuck off Sydney for a couple of months and then it rains and it rains and it rains because of the interaction between the atmosphere with this big source of heat. So people are aware of certain individual eddies but we study the whole lot of them. <laughs> not all, not at all. In fact, uh, when I didn't really think about studying the ocean uh, until I was halfway through my university career. Though I'd always had an affiliation with the ocean because of sailing with my dad on Botany Bay every weekend and watching the wind interact with the currents and the waves and, and sort of looking at how that worked. Um, but it was really, really only halfway through my university career that I started being very um, focused on doing oceanographic work. And before that, I'd worked in a bank, I'd worked in an insurance office, I'd worked as a research assistant up on the Barrier Reef and uh, done lots of different jobs, but always coming back to oceanography because I could use maths, physics, computing, and apply it to something that, uh, you know, understanding the ocean and its part in the Earth system has always been really satisfying. Well, one of the challenges I have at the moment is that uh, I've been working on my own research, and that is uh, a lot in contact with people in all different countries. I work with my team in Toulouse, I work with the French community, but I also have a lot of contact with uh, other teams doing similar things all over the world. That's part of the, the science uh, lifestyle. But in terms of organising as well, um, the oceanographic community um, around these satellite measurements, we're about to launch a new satellite at the end of this year that I've been working on for 15 years and trying to coordinate groups from all over the world to, to prepare what we think we will see with these new satellite measurements. And it's always a surprise when you, when you launch a new technology, you sometimes see things you hadn't been expecting. And we also have a big group of people all over the world doing in situ measurements, like going out to sea in ships and measuring the interior of the ocean. And as the satellite passes over, we see how sea level's changing at small scales. And all over the world, there'll be people in uh, early 2023 who'll be making these big, um, big um, in situ observations. And so 
that's very stressful because we have to launch the satellite, we have to have everything coming together and being ready, but it's also incredibly exciting because we've had a lot of people brainstorming about what they're going to be doing, what they think they'll be seeing, and then we'll have to come back to, with your reality check what we actually see and re-loop through everything. And uh, so it's, it's a big challenge, but it's also a big um, satisfaction. Well, I guess uh, one of the things uh, I've always found uh, working in oceanography is that if you're keen on maths and you're keen on physics and computing, it's a really, really exciting way to apply that to something that's understanding a key component of the Earth system. So it allows you to use all of those maths, physics, computing skills with an application that I find is very uh, inspiring and stimulating. So, so anyone who's motivated to do that, it's, it's an excellent field. And the other thing from my experience is that I was really lucky when I went through my university training to have a lot of mentors who were very inspiring, but who also um, proposed opportunities to go and study for a while overseas or to go and work in different areas. And I always took that up. I always accepted the opportunities to go and, uh, and work for a couple of months uh, somewhere else. And that then puts in other connections and other opportunities. So my other advice would be if opportunities come up and you've got the opportunity to do it, don't be afraid, go for it. <laughs> and, uh, and working overseas, um, I'm not cut off from my Australian colleagues and I'm not, you know, they're... You just keep building more and more interactions over time. And so it's not something that will mean you go and live somewhere and therefore, um, you know, there's no further contact with your close community. A, a working life today, you can keep working wherever you are. So, so it's, uh, and with who you want to. Mm -hmm.